subscribe, please. Hey guys, welcome back. It's your favorite Gimp with a Limp, and I am here with a quick playthrough for you guys of Space Infantry. I wasn't planning on doing it quite this soon, but uh, I know they're going to Kickstarter here very soon, and I wanted to take and have a quick video up showing you guys how the game plays, some of the new components, all that type of stuff. Uh, so when it does go to Kickstarter, you can make a decision for yourself whether or not this is a game that's going to interest you. So we're going to do this quick playthrough. This is uh, Mission 4. We'll go over the setup of that here in a sec. I wanted to show you some of the new components specifically real quick before we started. Uh, this is one of the uh, counter sheets. I haven't punched out all of them because I'm not using all of them. But here are the counters for the chit draw for the, the results, all right? And this new version allows you to take and either use the old chit draw mechanic, which had three of each one of the numbers, one through six, plus a critical fail or critical success. Uh, so you could have above six or zero. You could have more options besides just the one through six. However, they do have the ability to kind of have this set up in the die roll as well. And I know I've heard some people asking like, okay, well, how do you get a zero or a seven or eight when it comes to rolling dice? All right, so here's how this system is going to work when it comes to the extended dice. Now, when we do our playthrough, we're just gonna do a, a simple one to six just to show you guys the ease of the base game. But if you want the extended dice, this is what you're gonna do. Let's pretend that the blue die is our basic die and the red die is going to be our colored die, okay? You have to pick one die, your colored die, to focus on when you're rolling for whatever the result is. And it depends on what comes up on this colored die on whether or not you're going to have that critical success or critical failure. Now, what you're looking for is whether or not this colored die gets a one or a six, okay? So let's say that our colored die gets a one result. In that case, you will take and roll your uh, regular die again. Oh, hold on. Let me, I'm reading it again just to make sure that I'm on the, the right page. Here we go. If the color die is a one, the totals change to a uh, zero. It's, da -da -da -da. yeah, you're only actually going to roll again when the color die is a six. So if you do get a one on your color die, then it's considered your critical fail, and that's when you get a zero. However, when you get a six, that's when you're going to roll again to determine whether or not you're uh, getting a seven or eight. And what you're going to do is roll your other die, and on a roll of a one or a two, that's when you get that critical success. And what you're going to do is add that result that you roll, either the one or the two, to the six. So if you roll a one, your total will be a seven. And if you roll a two, if I can find it out here, if you roll a two, then your total is going to be an eight. So you'd be rolling two dice with one of them being your colored die to determine what type of result you're getting. And you're always paying attention to that colored die. So you can have the chit pull type mechanic of critical success and failure with your dice roll, but it does complicate your dice roll a fair amount in the fact that you're having to constantly pay attention to that colored die. And I know for me that that would be something I could very easily overlook, but uh, if you've played a fair amount of rounds of Space Infantry and you want to spice it up a little bit and you know give yourself some extra options, uh, they've come up with an actually relatively ingenious way to do that. So I like the system. For our uh, playthrough here, we're going to take and not use it. We're just going to go with the basic uh, rolling 1d6 for our results and leaving it as such. Now, when it comes to the game itself, there are campaigns or hive missions, or you can just play a standard mission and just run it you know, by itself. One of the things I did like about the original uh, space infantry is it had portability. So when you were traveling, it was a game that was easier to take with you uh, for setup since everything that you needed was on one sheet. The big drawback to the huge drawback to that was the replayability was relatively low. Once you had played a map a couple of different times, you pretty much had a strategy down and you knew how to beat it. And there wasn't a whole lot of incentive to play that map again. These maps 
While the paths are all going to be the same, you can see that we do have node cards now for all the different nodes. And for this one, you like I said, we're on mission four. You see how it says mission S004. These are specific node cards to this mission. So these are gonna be the, all, the only time you'll use these specific cards will be for this specific mission. And there are other uh, cards for other missions. There are campaign cards. There are generic indoor, outdoor passage uh, type cards for other maps. There's like three big stacks of node cards. So it gives the game a huge amount of variety, even with this map remaining the same and having these same cards, I will never know the exact path that these nodes are gonna come out. So one game going north might be my best bet and next game going south might be my best bet. You know, you can't tell on what's gonna happen. So that's a, a real neat idea that they've got going on with that. I love the inclusion of the node cards. Uh, like I said, we're not gonna cover every single aspect of the game, but just a little taste of it. This mission is different in the fact that there's only one hostile, the Leviathan, which is printed right here on the board. That does make the play much easier because you don't have to worry about uh, thumbing through a whole lot of cards. And the purpose of this mission is there's a rift, a portal, and this big Leviathan came through and your space infantry gets sent in to kill the beast and close the portal before it gets too big and too powerful to be taken out. Uh, it does have a lot of health, pretty good attack, especially at melee range. It deals extra uh, damage at melee range. And uh, in my uh, unboxing, I told you guys I couldn't remember whether lower numbers or higher numbers are better. Lower numbers are better, so you can tell it's melee range is, is better. It does have a shield, which we'll touch on on combat, but basically it uh, gives it the ability to possibly not take some damage and eight health, which is a lot uh, for the monster. Now, the way this works on this mission, normally you're gonna go through and at the top of these node cards, you see how it says six plus Leviathan and it could say something else for a different mission, six plus A for like a, a an event in the A column or B, C or a special event or something to that nature. If we roll a six plus, then for this event, we would encounter the Leviathan. And on this one, you're gonna take and go through and normally you would go back and forth until you kill or are killed in a combat. That's not gonna be the way in this one. It's just brief encounters with the uh, Leviathan. So if you encounter him on a specific node, then you'll take, fight him one time and that'll be it. And you're pushing all the way up here to his lair, that's where you ultimately want to get. And at that point, once you attack him, it's kill or be killed. Whoever wins, wins. Uh, since his, uh, you do roll for range in this game, and it's going to vary depending on the opponent that you're fighting, this guy is more likely to attack in a melee range instead of a fire range. So basically, short shotgun, hand grenade type range. So when I was selecting my troops, I based around that in hopes of uh, that coming up more often so I could be able to put out more damage. Now, I played through this last night and I ended up ruffle stomping uh, the Leviathan, but I got some ungodly good rolls and the Leviathan got some ungodly bad rolls. So I ended up blowing through the mission very quickly. Well, uh, it probably won't go <laughs> that route for uh, uh, this playthrough since I've got it going on for you guys and you get to watch. Do keep yourself one of the little counters nearby when you are doing your combat so you can uh, determine, when you determine range, you can remind yourself it's going to say melee on one side, fire on the other, obviously. There's one other specific event to this mission, and it's frostbite, and if you trigger that event, one unit will take a wound. There's no armor save. There's no anything. Basically, it's so cold, he gets frostbitten and takes damage. Bam. All right. Also, when it comes to either playing a mission or campaign, you're going to have to select your team. If you're just playing a one-off mission, you get 110 points to select your team, plus you get the squad leader. You always get the squad leader, no matter what, when it comes to picking your team. Your squad leader, you see, does not have either fire or melee combat because he doesn't 
you know, attack. He leads his team. The big thing for him is his command ability, which gives him the ability to boost the effects of his squad with whatever skill check they're doing. And he does have a couple other skills, communication and intelligence. If they were on any of the nodes, he could use his skills for that. Do keep in mind, though, he can't command and use one of his skills. He's doing one of the things there on the board. Also, I took a explorer because after looking at the types of nodes that are on the board, he covers everything, tracking, scouting, climbing. And I ended up, I was like, okay, I'm going to need a specialist because unless I can find a path with nothing but advance in it, I'm going to have to have one of these skills at least to take and get my way through. So I uh, got that specialist. Now, like I said, I decided to focus on guys that are better at melee combat because the Leviathan is going to focus more on melee statistically. Of course, I ended up getting a lot of fire combat last night and just part of the reason I stomped him. The shotgunner, 30 points, 2 health. Fire combat is a 5, so you can see the fire combat isn't that good, but for melee combat, he actually has a 3 and a 4, which means he gets to do it twice. And of course, he has the advanced skill. So he's awesome when it comes to, especially when you get the shotgunner leveled up, they are awesome in this game. Uh, generic fire team A, and you either have a fire team or assault team, and one's better at melee and one's better at shooting at a distance. Either a 3-4 or a 4-3. I went with the one that is better in melee, so 4-3. They also have the advanced skill, 20 points. And on the off chance that I did get involved in fire combat, I wanted to have someone who was decent at it. So I did take one sniper, also two health. And just like the shotgunner gets two attacks at melee, she gets two attacks at range. So three, four in range, but you can see the melee skills only five. So most of my guys are going to do better at melee. One of them isn't. I'm gonna stand a better chance of coming out on top if most of the combats come up the way that they statistically should. But I do have one person just in case, I like I did last night, have a whole bunch where they're coming out on top with uh, uh, fire range. Also the advanced skill. You, the advanced skill, which is basically move, is always gonna be on your combat troops. And I also got a close combat team, 30 points. And you can see they have a shield, which is an armor, and two health. That will allow them to potentially ignore some wounds coming through. That can definitely come in handy and save your troops. Because when I do take wounds, I'm always going to try to apply them first to the close combat team to try to avoid taking that damage. You can see four, three on the combat stats and, of course, advance. And I know I'm kind of rushing through on what the combat stats are, but you're going to see me play those here in just a second, how they work out. Also, when you're picking out your team, one of the things you're going to pick out is your eight uh, items that you get to take with you. You can take up to eight. And for me, I decided to take three grenades, which I can use at melee range, and they increase the amount of wounds that are taken by the enemy forces. And generally, you want to use these to take and spread a bunch of wounds out among a bunch of different enemies. But I figured it could also be useful against a Leviathan that fights at melee range because I can pop one of these, roll a die, and hit him with that many more wounds and take his butt out real quick. Intel markers, they're just useful to have. They do a, a few different things, but one of the big things they do is give you two successes when it comes to moving into a node, two guarantee successes. So if you're just having the hardest time getting through an area, you can pop some intel markers to get yourself through there. And also, I've got three med kits. And the med kits are something that you can take and pop to avoid taking a wound or a fatal wound. Uh, very useful, keeps your team on the board. So when it comes to my close combat team, if they fa uh, fail their armor roll, I can take and pop that med kit to keep them from taking damage. So it gives me a little bit extra health on the board when it comes to it. You can see all this is down here at the bottom of the turn record track, which for the most part is always gonna start there at one and give you 30 rounds to get through it. And I know you're sitting there thinking 30 rounds, that's a lot. Well, 
If you get stuck on a node, you'll be surprised on how quickly those rounds will take and actually burn out real, real, real quick. So uh, you do have to take and try to pay attention to that. Now, before we get started, I want to touch on one more special rule for our uh, Leviathan. There are alert levels. So that's something new to this game. Without getting long-winded into it, it's basically easy, medium, and hard on how you're going to play it. I'm leaving it on alert level one, which is easy, which means these special nodes <clears throat> do come into play. The Leviathan AP minus one and Leviathan AP minus two. So if I encounter the Leviathan on some of these other nodes here, where it says negative two, negative two, negative one, he's taking a penalty on these early nodes. And then of course, when I get up there to the layer, he's got no penalty if I get all the way up there and it's just a full on combat. But basically that subtracts from his role. He's either suffering one penalty to his role or two penalty to his role, just depending on what area I encounter him in. If you play this on alert level two or uh, three, these either get reduced or removed. So you lose that bonus that you have towards it, which depending on how well this goes, like I said, I'll probably get stomped since I'm recording this. But uh, last night I ended up just smoking the Leviathan. So we'll uh, see how it plays out. But let's go ahead and get started here. Okay, so we're over here on the left. We have started in this area mark start. You can see it's a little green icon denoting that we start here and I'm going to go ahead and place the event marker in this node because your starting node is always considered complete. You put a little event marker on these to denote the fact that you've completed whatever event it is that you've already completed. Okay, sorry, had to handle something there. Now, like I was saying, the event markers, you're going to use those just to take and denote that you've completed whatever event is located at a certain location. So for us, I was looking at it and I think our best bet is going to take and go along this route. We only have one direction to start with down here into the climb, go up here to advance and then cut across to the next advance tracking. And then we can actually head directly up to the layer from the tracking node here. It looks like to be the shortest, easiest path to get to them because otherwise we have to do a climb of five, which is going to be hard to pass or an advance of four. Down over here, Scout, those are ones that go just towards my uh, uh, specialist, which will be harder to get through. So if I go this route, I only have two paths that I have to go through, Climb 2 and Tracking 1, to actually get into these nodes right off the bat. Also, if you look at it, there are some caches along the way. I'm not going to be passing through any of them. This one is a G and this one is an I. So here we can potentially get some grenades and here we can potentially get some intel packs. It gives you an incentive to kind of go off the beaten path or down over in this direction. Like I said, I don't think I'm going to need it. And I'm thinking for ease of play to save myself some trouble, I'm going to pop an Intel marker right off the bat to give myself two guaranteed successes for climb two. So I can go ahead and guarantee myself a move directly in there because you can also use an Intel pack to give yourself an ambush situation and an advantage in combat, but you can't have the advantage on this map on this mission the leviathan's considered to have home field advantage so you don't get to use those for that so i might as well pop it to give myself extra time now moving through now the neat thing with this one is there are markers for all the different types of units and i went ahead and popped them out just because i like having them you don't have to you can use a single marker to represent your team or like me you can use a marker uh, for each one of them, have your whole stack moving through. It just depends on whatever, you know, you like doing. I like having the extra counters just because I'm, you know, goofy like that. Now, since we've gone in here, this is, oh, let me show you guys our sequence of play. I didn't even thought about it. This is in our operations uh, phase. First thing you're going to do is advance the turn. We're starting the game. Move your squad, which is what we have done. And then we're going to do our node resolution, which is our command skill check squad checks, apply any success levels, and then we do our advanced check, blah, 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 blah. So move on from there. 
I'm gonna go ahead and do a command skill check just in case I need it and we encounter the Leviathan here. Now, the way you're gonna do that is just like how you're gonna do any other skill check. You're gonna take roll a die, compare it to your skill level, and you're gonna uh, divide the die result by the uh, level of your skill, dropping any remainder. So basically, if I rolled a five here for my command skill check, I would get one success, and the extra one would be left over, would just be gone. So for every integer you can take and actually divide the number into, you get a success that you can use. So if you get two successes, you get two command points or two wounds or two whatever. So that's how lower numbers are better in this game. I'm gonna take and roll a die for our command skill check. I need at least a four to take and get one command point. And I got a six. Like I said, those extra points are wasted. I would need an eight at least, so that critical success to take and get an extra command point. So what I'll do is I'll take my little command point here, place it onto my squad leader, and that command point is like a lose, uh, use it or lose it. If I don't use it this round, I won't have it. Now, I don't have to do any other skill checks currently with my troops since we've already got into this area, but I will do this event line. You can see six plus, we will encounter the Leviathan. And like I said, an encounter with the Leviathan is just a one off on this mission. We'll do one round of combat and then he dips off. And we'll keep doing that all the way up until we either kill him or make it to his lair and he kills us or whatever happens. So let's roll, see if we get a six to encounter the Leviathan. And we do get a six. Right off the bat, the Leviathan is coming out swinging. Damn, look at that. I thought we weren't going to encounter him this soon. Okay, well, that's good. We've got a command point, so we can use that with this uh, set of combat going on here. Now, all the information you need for the Leviathan is listed right here on the board. It shows his stats, fire four, melee three, and his range. When rolling for range, we're going to do that right now. Zero to two is going to be fire, so basically one to two for us, or three up will be melee. So you can see it's just a little bit more likely to be melee than it is uh, fire, but he's horrific. Each melee attack deals two wounds from this guy, so I'm hoping that he, uh, if he goes melee, I can use grenades and do extra damage to him and pop him down real quick, but if he goes fire, you know, it's, it's a whole big and back and forth thing. So let's see what our range is going to be. Three, okay, so we will be at melee range. Now, this is where I'm gonna start generating successes for my guys and generating wounds. Now you see how it says Explorer here. He does have a melee skill, but he's one of my specialists. Specialists can only be used if there's more than three enemies or less than three uh, troops, combat troops of your own fighting in the combat. Right now I have four combat troops, so he can't participate just yet. So I won't be generating any successes for him. We'll start with our shotgunner, which his melee skill is three, four. We'll take and do it this way. The skill three will be my red die and the skill four will be my blue die. So I can go ahead and roll them at the same time. All right, come on, big money for the shotgun. All right, the three and the four. Oh, if the blue had been for the three, I could have generated an extra success for that. So we'll take and put these dice here on him so I keep track of it. I'm going to do it that way. So I know for this, I've gotten two successes, three into four, you know, one, and then four into five, one. So each one of those is one success. Now for our fire team A, they have a skill of three for melee. So we'll take and roll four. Oh, no, they got a two, but... That's not the end of the world, because you'll see what I can do with that here in just a sec. Now for our sniper, their skill is only a five, so it's not very good. We were hoping for a five or six here. And we got the six. Good God, the dice are rolling good for me. They have done well. I'm, I'm going to blow the Leviathan out in one turn. Watch this. All right, now this uh, close combat team, melee skill of three. Got a four. All right, see, this is what I'm talking about. I'm going to kill the Leviathan in one turn. I've got it set too easy. I am going to pop a grenade as well for extra wounds. So we'll set that down there. Now, 
this is a success, this one is, this is, this is. So that's four successes just from what I rolled. And now you're looking at it and going, okay, well, what are you gonna do with this? You can use a command point to take and bump any one of these up by one per command point. So if I place that on that two, that gives him a total of three, making this a success as well. That's how those command points can really help you out, bumping you up that one number you need to get two successes or even to get a success. That really does help out. So this gives us a total of um, five successes. Also, when it comes to your grenades, you roll a single die for your grenade and add that many wounds to the combat as well. So we get to roll a single die to determine how many extra wounds the grenades uh, cause, and the grenades are not armor piercing. So let's roll this, although none of my weapons are armor piercing anyway. Three, so that's three extra wounds. Like I said, we're gonna kill this guy in one turn. All right, that gives me a total of wounds for the Leviathan to deal with of, what was it again? Five, eight. So yeah, we got him all in, in one go, but he does have some armor, so we're not gonna kill him in just one shot. Well, like I said, on easy, the Leviathan is kinda easy. So I'm gonna take eight of these generic markers and I'm gonna set them right here next to the Leviathan, just as a mnemonic reminder for me that I did score those hits and set our grenade out of the way. Now, the Leviathan's going to go. He is at melee range. He gets to roll a die, compare it to his melee skill. And remember, he does two damage for each hit. He got a four, so he gets one. He will take and cause two wounds. I'm going to go ahead and just grab the wounds out. These are our wound counters, and I'm going to place them down. And I can associate them as I want between my troops. I'm gonna take and place one for the CC team because I do want them taking and um, trying to block that with one of their armors. And I'll tell you what, I will pop a med kit to cancel the other wounds. Now, let's take and roll a die for our armors. Our CC team is gonna need a four up and the Leviathan's gonna need a four up. We'll start with our CC team, see if they block it. And they do block it, so this wound goes away from the armor. And now the Leviathan is going to do the same. And if he fails this roll, I've killed the Leviathan in the first go. He killed it. You gotta be kidding me. The dude took this is eight wounds, right? Yeah. The Leviathan just took eight wounds. I'm not even gonna grab the wound counters out. And that kills him off in the first turn. I just got incre incredibly lucky there. Let's make sure I count that out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. So we did take him out on the first go. Like I said, I think this one is a little easier. Oh, and I forgot the, we shouldn't even had the wounds because he got a minus two on this anyway. And there are markers uh, to denote that, that we can place down. Um, this one went in my favor very, very well, all right? Uh, I just ended up rolling well and getting all those. Generally, you're not gonna get that amount of successes. And then popping a grenade just laid him off when it came to that. So I took him out in one go with the Leviathan. We blew his ass apart. Oh, and I can mark it as event complete. Now, had this combat not just gone incredibly in my favor when it came to uh, all the dice rolls, we will take and continue on doing the same thing that we were just doing. Rolling to try to get into the different nodes. When it came to the advance, I could roll for each of my guys that had the advance skill, meaning I could get into these advanced nodes much quicker than I could in some of these specialized nodes. And you'll notice that in, um, in some of the other missions, it'll have a larger variety of the nodes that you could take and have on the board. And what that does is it gives you a reason to bring non-combat troops like the Explorer. You might end up needing one or two or even three specialists. And then that's making you think, okay, well, I'm having to make sacrifices here. 
so I can have the, sk uh, the skills I need? Or do I take and not bring a specialist and I just bring some Intel kits to help pop my way through that node if I come across it? Now you can get through a node if no one has that skill. Uh, you can potentially get successes for it, but it involves rolling a natural six to get them. So it, it is quite difficult to get through a node that you don't have any ability to. And imagine that you didn't have an ability to get climb successes and um, it's a five to get through this one. You know what I'm saying? So you would have to roll a six naturally, you know, five times to be able to pop through that if that was your only direction, you know, separate map, something like that. You can see how very quickly you would lose out on your turns going through the game. And that's why it is really important to make sure and have the necessary, uh, necessary skills that uh, you're going to need. Now, when you're taking and uh, placing these out, you can take and, you know, take and look at them. Like, okay, well, I'm going to need scout. I'm going to need advance. I'm going to need climb. And then when it comes time to actually place them on the board, that's when you'll take and turn them over, shuffle them up, and then place them out wherever they're going to go onto the map. Uh, at that point. So you'll still get that randomization, but there's nothing stopping you from looking at the the requirements to know, okay, I need this for this mission. And this even comes into it further when you're playing the campaign and you're using your campaign sheets to keep track of it because you're starting off with basic fire teams that don't have good skills. And as you're moving up, you can actually level up your fire teams so they have bonus APs and bonus uh, chances to get skill levels and you can increase your shotgunners to where they're doing even more damage and just busting everything down or you can get a guy with a flamethrower or you can get plasma grenades that cause fire on top of um, you know doing wounds uh, uh, as well or you can get armor piercing weapons uh, real cool stuff especially if you use it in uh, a campaign style fashion. Don't get me wrong. I have fun just laying out a map and playing a one-off. Maybe uh, one that lasts a little longer than the Leviathan. He's died on me very quick the past two times, but uh, that's just going to happen sometimes. I've had games where I've gotten blown off the map very quickly, and then games where I walk through, it all comes down to the dice gods sometimes, and you just can't do anything about it. Uh, I think that's going to cover the majority of it there is so much else that i could show you guys on this i just don't have the time to do the the hours long video uh i will show in this just in case you didn't see my walkthrough or my unboxing video one other cool component there is the hive which is a different type like you're going into an alien underground and instead of having a large cardstock map like this that you're placing the nodes on, you're gonna have these tiles that you'll place together in a random fashion or whatever fashion that will give you a different map. So not only would you have variety in the nodes, but you could have variety in how these are placed out. And there's nothing stopping you from laying them all out and making a huge map and just seeing how far you can get. And, uh, there are some uh, big enemies besides the Leviathan. There's the like alien queen that you could uh, be fighting down here. So you're fighting your, her minions as you're moving through her hive, trying to get to her to take her out where she's hatching her eggs or doing whatever. Very alien-esque. And there's even hive-specific sp uh, node cards as well. Just like they're mission-specific and then area-specific, you have hive-specific. So like I said... The portability for Space Infantry has gone down, but the replayability, the quality of the components has gone through the roof. I I hate to say it, but I won't be playing my old version of Space Infantry when I have this in front of me to play. It's just outstanding. They really did take this one to the next level. If you're into solo games and you like the sci-fi theme, this one's pretty much a no-brainer. I definitely thoroughly enjoy it. I'm sure you guys will as well. It just has that neat feel. And I especially like the fact that they have the uh, the tokens as well for all the different units so you can have them all stacked up. And that's it's just the dumb thing is for me, I enjoy having them all stacked up to say, hey, you know, these guys are here. And if one of them gets killed off, I can pull their token out and know they got killed off. All right. 
But I'm going to cut this here. You guys, uh, make sure you stay tuned. Like I said, Space Infantry will be coming to Kickstarter uh, here in just the next few weeks. I'm not sure exactly when, but possibly towards the end of April, uh, beginning of May, you should look to see the Kickstarter coming. And I don't even know what types of uh, stretch goals or extra bonuses they're going to have uh, with this. So I'm excited to see what they're offering uh, as well. All right, but that's going to be it for me. You guys take care. I'll catch you in the next one.